Uh, it has been two weeks since the last time we played, so you're probably going to want to recap. So we brought you this brand oh. new mechanism of recapping the show, which we yeah. do every time, and it's called Rogar's Recap. <laughs> oh. <it> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, you freaked me out. I'm like, oh, no, what did I not? Did I see something in the chat? All right. No. <laughs> I'll put on the recap for the recap. Okay, here we go. Uh, all right, so, uh, like, uh, most recently, we did fought and defeated the Twilight Knight, yeah. Then afterwards, Kayla's father showed up and gave her three tests. And in the midst of that, he gave a revelation bomb to, like, Tetsilia and Artemisia, like, something about their mother or her nature uh, that was quite uh, shocking to them. And uh, so last time they were working through some of that uh, revelation and then went off out of town to, like, uh, Artemisia's stepmother's, uh, well, what her stepmother is being, uh, was staying with uh, House Bleth, uh, folks and Cecilia got a, you know drunken like comparing tattoos kind of a Jaws <laughs> scene uh, with the leader of uh, House Bleth who I think was flirting with her a bit and then uh, and then Artemisia found out that Marcelle is maybe being held there not entirely like voluntarily and then um, uh... and then Rogar he received a letter from the holy mother of his uh, home temple that said basically you've got like a month and a half and you have to like face me for judgment about this whole boggle won't heresy. Uh, so he's freaking out a bit and uh, so agreed to like do this na like naked dance ritual at midnight in the graveyard, as one does, uh, <laughs> with uh, Shea Dark Song to like try and contact, get in touch with his goddess uh, uh, because he's been having trouble uh, communicating with her of late. And uh, at the end of that, uh, well, uh, the vision of Sharindlar appeared to him, but then like her eyes like turned into these huge dark pools of darkness darkly darkness and uh, <laughs> and maggoty things came out or something it was horrible and uh, so he was quite uh, quite distraught and um, that's where we left that off so anyway so we've had like quite a bit of horror kind of stuff that that at last kind of very ended on this sort of horrific theme and, you're uh, welcome <laughs> and the, the the twilight night went around and set up these horrific scenes for us like of like some horror movie and uh, uh -oh. and we've been fighting vampires so i thought i'll just like what are the Whiskey Irregulars' fears, and what horror movie does it remind me of? So I just do this really quickly. So uh, starting with myself, just leading off this last scene, uh, uh, Rogar's a cleric who uh, has some demons. Obviously, he needs to exorcise both internal and external in order to serve his people, and 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 uh, you know, in this most desperate time of need. So I was thinking <laughs> he, he's most like uh, you know the exorcist. The Bogglewomp Exorcist. And see, he's got his little hammer there and his little horns. <laughs> anyway, okay. <laughs> so then I was like, okay, so Stong, Stong sort of, uh, you know, he's. He has no fear. Whole, has no it, fear. Except fear itself. <laughs> his strength is his strength and his oh fear boy. is his fear. Uh, so he struggles with the whole nature versus nurture thing and also is trying to be like a father to this monstrous, uh, you know. Adopted daughter Mirabel. Monstrous. And, well, you know, monstrous. <clears throat> Cute, cutely monstrous. Uh, <laughs> and, that doesn't uh, make it better. <laughs> right. uh, and, and, and kind of like dealing with the legacy of his father, right? So I was thinking, basically, he's like, uh, you know, Frankenstein. Uh, but then, uh, <laughs> and then Cecilia, you know, I had a couple in mind for Cecilia, but I thought since she really? kind of partners up with Stong quite frequently and they're like best friends, and then she's sort of like someone who like fears that nobody actually like cares about her and uh, perhaps that, you know, and perhaps fears that she will become like unduly influenced by her, the person who created her in her basic current form and her powers and stuff. So she's sort of the bride of... All <laughs> <laughs> oh, the glasses in my face! <laughs> so you know, that's I have a good to look. say, actually, like, <laughs> I have to say, I well, think... That's... I, that's well done. Yeah. I think, I think you could really actually <laughs> rock that hairstyle in real life, Erin. I think that's quite the... Anyway. That's amazing. So then, uh, and this was, this was my backup for Cecilia, was, uh, was Carrie. You know, <laughs> Carrie, because you have Hirona Wachu who, like, appears out of blood, and there's that very iconic, yeah, like, she's yeah. covered, you know, in blood. Uh, but that's really, you know, not really focused on that as a warlock. And, uh, um... And, and, you know, you're dealing with these dark internal powers and stuff. But as then a I warlock? Thought, as a warlock. 
Who, who's a warlock? I mean, I'm sorry. Who's a warlock? <laughs> yeah, As a what witch. are you saying? Of Rashomon, of course. Uh, uh, but then I thought, uh, actually, Artemisia, you know, so Carrie, raised by an abusive parent, uh, you know, told she's unworthy. Uh, uh, she chases external validation, right? And the status tries to get the, the cool kids to like her. And uh, when instead she should be embracing her inner power, right? So, uh, so I think, you know, I, I, I went with, with uh, RT. Uh, so there you go. Uh, RT. And I should have changed this to if only she knew she had the power, but I, I didn't get to that. So anyway, that's, that's I think, the horror of it. And then uh, Caleb, you know, Caleb was a bit of a, a tough one, but I thought, uh, you know, she's uh, basically trying to sort of forge her own identity. Maybe she's sort of afraid of losing those things that she actually likes about her heritage and her identity, particularly her wings. Uh, and so, you know, body... <laughs> what's happening to the DM right now? It's fine. <laughs> body parts are f falling off and such. And, uh, and, and you know, and that, we hate when that happens. And she's not keeping him in a jar, but she is keeping him tucked beneath, like, her mattress. So, like, yeah. I thought, oh. the flying elf. <laughs> uh, for her, and her poor wings have, like, fallen off. But, oh, uh, no. oh, boy. Well, hopefully never happen in real life. Oh, boy. In real life. In real life. The game. <laughs> uh, so, and then for, for final, my favorite for last, is uh, Sturge, who, uh, there, there's something, he, he, I think Sturge fears there's something bad in his heritage that he has inherited uh, from his, in his, in his lineage that, uh, that will cause him to become something vile and destructive and powerful. So, uh, so I thought, Fire Sturger. <laughs> oh, I love that hair. Uh, right. Oh, that's so, great. Steven, you know, it's like a younger Sturge. version of you. <laughs> yeah. So uh, anyway, that's what I have for the recap. Uh, you know, leading into this uh, potentially kind of horrific feeling uh, episode. Uh, and uh, with that, back to you, uh, omniscient narrator. Called. Also, would have accepted Sturge of Innsmouth. That would have worked, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. All right. Good job. Thank you. Thank you for that, Randy. That was excellent. So uh, we have a situation.